Uh, so I'm going to talk about um, uh, a very personal uh, viewpoint on the evolution of um, uh, semantic techniques and the mainstreaming of semantic <coughs> techniques. So um, I and particularly focus on the technologies around semantic search. There's a lot I, we can talk about. For example, just on the core semantics and use of semantics for information processing. That goes further decade back. Right? That probably start the discussion started in late 80s on that matter. And um, uh, I don't know, you know, the first use of the term ontology in the um, current literature in the current kind of uh, you know time frame, as far as data and knowledge concerns uh, occurred in, as we discussed before. 1991. It's a, a technical report that uh, Ramna, uh, uh, Tom Gruber wrote, right? Uh, and he was at Stanford then, and he did thesis. I believe the thesis was in 2000, 1993. Um, and uh, I had a paper in 1992 called "So Far Yet So Near." So far schematically, yet so near semantically. The things may look very different, but they mean the same, right? So, so it's like synonyms, you know, they are very different syntax, but they mean the same thing, right? So, similarly, there were a lot of other things of that nature that we had discussed in 1992 where uh, we had used ontology. I think in a very different context uh, than uh, Gruber's use, uh, and yet for generally the same purpose that the Gruber used. Uh, but anyway, there's a lot of other work on semantics, but I'm going to start out with basically 1998. Um, and in 1998, we had this system called um, Video Anywhere. And the Video Anywhere system, uh, we had the funding from a company called LG, LG Electronics. You uh, probably all know about it. And uh, what we had proposed to do and what we actually implemented a prototype for was um, that people had at that time videos in their own archives, you know, on their own, you know, they were recording the videos and they're storing somewhere. And then uh, there is electronic program guide. Uh, which will give you, you know, saying that uh, uh, there'll be uh, uh, there is a video accessible, uh, you know, uh, that will be streamed at that time. Um, you know, the guide the guide simply gives you the schedule. Um, there was also discussion of interactive TV, although that was not yet, uh, you know, uh, commercialized. Uh, I think very soon um, uh, uh, Microsoft tried to do something called web TV and interactive TV. And then um, uh, there was increasingly, um, uh, the, the, you know, the number of videos on the web and audio on the web ballooned. Um, and in those days, we had so-called, uh, most still we had a lot of access through um, uh, the modem, right? So it was pretty uh, low bandwidth. Uh, broadband was not quite, uh, you know, uh, widespread. And so we had this QCIF video. Uh, quarter size of the video. It's rather jerky and there's a lot of trade-off between uh, sound and uh, quality of video and other things of that nature. And at that point, uh, so it was very interesting. So we developed a Java you know, based uh, system for indexing all the three types of video and provide a uniform, a singular access to, uh, you know, search of all the kind of video. And you can schedule the video that is going to come on electronic program guide. You can look for a video that is in your archive, or you can search the video on the web. We said we'll give this singular access and in search capability for all the types of all the three types of videos, right? And um, uh, we gave a big, based on the terms of our contract, we gave the uh, um, uh, we gave. LG first right of refusal if they wanted to license it, they did not. So then I decided to license it to form a company. And that company was called Tali. So at that point what happened was that uh, two things were happening. One was um, broadband. So more and more broadband was, had started to become available. And other is the explosion of digital media. And so, uh, Tali, by the way, stands for, it's, it's a word from uh, Indian languages, uh, and it stands for applause. This is Tali. Right? So, coming together of broadband and digital um, media. And um, uh, you would see, for example, on CNN was very popular in those days, uh, much more than it is now. 
and uh, you know CN will post number of videos of whatever you know the news things are and um, uh, through experiences we had figured out that they were updating their website three times a day okay. so uh, the idea was that uh, because it's new search we want to be able to search that uh, so the, the, one of the first product that Tali made was semantic search that was not the only thing they did but search was the kind of first product right? so we wanted to make web search engine which was semantic because I was a big believer in that because uh, we you know, uh, we had extensive work on metadata, and uh, because this was a kind of media that was just coming out, and uh, people there was a lot more interest in that. Very soon, we realized that um, much of the technology we had, only small part of the technology, had to deal with digital media. I can apply the same technology on text also. So I can apply. It can be standard search engine related. Uh, you know, the scope can be same as the standard search engine as um, in those days. Um, uh, uh, the you know, there were a search, the search engine called Excite and then Altavista. And uh, then there was a directory structure of Yahoo and LookSmart. And so, um, and then Google had been, um, uh, uh, Google also started in 1997, not that long ago. So it's a pretty new company, um, uh, that too. Uh, you know, as an aside, for example, the smartest thing Google did was um, uh, the, um, uh, you know, use single box. Everybody else, uh, um, because we figured out that people were giving, uh, search engines were giving simple and complex search uh, you know, interfaces, but almost nobody used advanced uh, search, search interface. And um, so and that sim single box thing was a major innovation. Uh, you know, um, I, I just mentioned uh, in the context of ontology, the name of uh, Tom Gruber. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Tom is uh, a serial entrepreneur, so I think he's done at least three a company or more. His third company, if I remember correctly, uh, is the Siri company, right? Yes. So the one that Apple acquired for $200 million, so roughly around that uh, uh, money. And uh, Google, you know, you can now make uh, an analogy, you know, a kind of connection that, um, uh, uh, and this is, by the way, much later, not, not now. I'm just giving you a side. Uh, obviously, we'll talk about ontology. He was believing that, indeed, Siri had used ontology. Uh, if, maybe I'll come back to that again. Uh, so um, uh, uh, the um, so a large amount of thing we did was still understanding text, but we did something unique about audio and video also, because it is not very relevant to our discussion here. I won't go into those details. Um, and uh, so we developed this search engine, and uh, there were several things. In, there was interesting things about the search engine. First of all, uh, just so that you understand the pipeline. In 1999, um, uh, Tim Berners-Lee uh, uh, you know, published this book, Weaving the Web. Right? And the last two chapters of the book, he talked about importance of metadata for data on the web. And basically, he said this metadata gives the semantics, and hence, he talked about semantic web. But that was the basic context. A lot of details were not there, other than saying primarily and, and I think some of you should read uh, those two chapters and see for yourself how much of the semantic work he really actually talked about. Right? And I don't think, if I remember correctly, there wasn't um, a full picture of all the applications that would be built using the semantic things. Or I don't think there was, if I remember correctly, I don't think there was, there was an emphasis uh, on metadata, but there was an emphasis on uh, uh, ontology or knowledge base. Uh, as an independent component that will inform understanding of the content. Right? So there's a significant difference between 1999 uh, use of semantic web by uh, um, Tim Berners-Lee and year 2000. And by the way, that was used in the book in came in 1999, if I, as far as I know. And uh, I founded the company Tali, a semantic web company, in August of 1999. So I like the term. And I wanted to uh, have my say in defining the term. Uh, so um, I did that uh, by finding, founding the company, and then uh, the, the technology we have worked on to patent it. Mm -hmm. right? So now, if you look at the uh, patent um, uh, and, uh, and, and what, what it uh, kind of the, the title of the patent is, right? So this, is, uh, this was filed in March 2000. It's a matter of months. Right? 
And um, uh, you know, if you want to really understand the historical perspective, look at those two chapters that Tim Berners-Lee wrote, and look at uh, what is in this patent. But this patent, particularly, because I was doing company, I really have to really think about uh, products and tools and customers and all that, hence applications. So here you can see in the title itself, it says, systems and methods for creating a semantic web and its applications in browsing, searching, profiling, personalization, and advertising. We okay. talked about five applications. Okay. And it uh, talked about in significant detail how do we build it. Okay. So, at least my knowledge, and uh, uh, you know, obviously nobody can claim to have complete knowledge, but in my knowledge, um, uh, this was the very first document that I can find of this kind which talks about several core things, which the, the point that I'm going to make is that what were those core things that were talked about then and are they, have they survived, have they been revived in the context of um, remember Sivani search that we implemented this and we had some customers and you saw if you saw that article I will come to uh, the search engine that reads your mind, it talks about some customers in the last paragraph. Um, now uh, things kind of for semantic search died down in a way. Because my own company, um, Tali, was acquired by our customer. And what happened is that, uh, remember I started the company in 1999, August, and, in, uh, and I got venture capital funding, uh, $2.4 million. Um, that was nice, uh, and I could have gotten more also, but my VC said, no, don't take more money, we'll get more later on as we need it. And um, uh, the, uh, uh, in April 2000, the internal, uh, the dot com, bubble burst. Right? You might remember, there were, those are times where web designers were getting $80,000. You know, huge amount of money. Right? Because it was the bubble. Right? And today also there is, by the way, some bubble going on. You know, I, I expect some bust to come soon. But, um, uh, uh, so while initially we built the company for the same thing that uh, other companies like uh, uh, Google and others were being released. Search was the major thing, right? And then we had other things. You can see um, we had the idea of uh, using um, a more targeted advertisement. Meaning we already knew that the way to make money, um, uh, you know, on the, for the search is through advertisement. We knew that. And it's in the part of the pattern. Right now it, say, it says that. Clearly it was part of business plan. But what happened was that when the bubble burst in April 2000 and uh, 2000, the market, uh, Nasdaq started coming down, and significantly so, and then it didn't come up for quite some time, that uh, the venture capital uh, basically um, came to conclusion in their infinite wisdom that you cannot make money by advertisement. So they, they, they basically said uh, advertisement cannot be a, um, uh, a business model, right? So they refused to give us money uh, for the second round, right? Uh, in fact, it so happened that my uh, VC were talked about in March itself, let's take the company public. Because those days companies were going public left and right, kind of thing, right? And then many of them even later on went bust. But that's okay. The point is that um, because of that, and so, so for from 2000, when the Nasdaq burst, to the day Google came out, uh, uh, Google went public in 2004, largely in that period, until Google put out the uh, material, as, you know that uh, that you have to file for getting the uh, taking the public pu uh, company public, the um, uh, uh, the uh, VCs basically didn't believe in advertising market. So unfortunately, uh, uh, and and Google of course proved that the market really to, uh, for internet company like Google, the way to make money is um, uh, advertisement. Uh, we were not as lucky as Google because um, my VC was much smaller uh, and uh, Google's VC was Sequoia. Yeah. And Google gave, uh, 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 Sequoia gave Google $25 million and um, uh, they, it gave them you know, seven years of making no money, essentially, right? Unfortunately, uh, for the, the $2.4 million, one-tenth of Google money, I, I didn't have that staying power. So um, uh, anyway, we agreed to get acquired by our customer. Uh, one of the three customers was Voket. Uh, they had, um, they were smarter. 
in the financial context says that so they had actually had very large round of VC funding. So they had a lot of money, but they didn't have the technology. So um, um, they, um, uh, being our customer, obviously they were of our technology, they wanted our technology. They were in the business of video content delivery, video content, you know, and such. So uh, there was a very um, a limited kind of uh, market in more enterprise centric market. And uh, given that we did not uh, get a second round funding before we got acquired, uh, you know, we, we came, instead of the web consumer centric company, we had to become um, uh, enterprise centric company. Then Vocate was again acquired in 2004, um, uh, and, uh, uh, and then and it became Simagix. And we did ex very good technology development, as I will show you in this uh, talk. And uh, then, um, uh, uh, in um, uh, 2006, uh, Vocate itself was acquired, became Fortent. Then it was again acquired, became, uh, and what is now, uh, one more, and then uh, it, what is now called Optimize. The interesting thing, and I'll come back to this again, is that one of the things we did was to, uh, in, when we became enterprise, was that um, uh, uh, we, we had to become market specific, vertical market specific. So the market that we uh, ended up being partly because, because the new CEO, I continued to be, uh, I was a CEO, founder, chairman of the board for the Tali, but when it was acquired, obviously I'm no longer the CEO, and I continued to do all the technology part of it. So I was whatever you call uh, CTO, you know, vice president of, uh, or executive vice president, whatever, but all the technology part, uh, all the technical people reported to me, uh, most of my people, by the way, we, in Tali we grew in two years, we grew to 35 people, um, and may, uh, half of them were my former students. And uh, you know, uh, so, uh, and it was also the first technology company to be founded in Athens, Georgia. Uh, and uh, uh, by this time it was acquired, uh, we had spent $7 million in the payroll, in the local economy, which was substantial in those days, uh, and, and, and in that context, in the Athens town context. Um, anyway. And so we had actually one of the interesting things that had happened was that we had built an application uh, that the, the new CEO was a reasonably good uh, sales person. And the salesperson promised everything um, uh, to the customers. Uh, sometimes the, they promise to the customers what you don't have. So he went and promised to Citibank. Uh, and by the way, I have been, I've been to uh, this company that went bankrupt, uh, uh, you know, what was that, uh, Lehman Brothers. Lehman. And I had been to uh, all these other things, Chase Manhattan, uh, Chase, um, and uh, to Citibank and Merrill Lynch and every of those things, right? But he promised, uh, what had happened was 9-11. Uh, so when 9-11 when happened, uh, I'm talking about just after OK, um, government came up with the Patriot Law. And Patriot Law required that, um, uh, you know, the banks <coughs> check whether the um, uh, uh, customers who are opening, whether the customer is individual or a, uh, or a business, opening the account um, is not involved in, uh, 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 you know, it does not have connection to uh, um, blacklisted entities. There's a Bank of, in Bank of England, uh, you know, uh, watch list. There is, um, uh, you know, US has watch list, FBI has watch list. You have to check against all of them and not just check direct connection, but indirect connections. Yeah? So the option they had was to use a search engine like Google to try and find, hey, there's any connection, I type in the name, and you find anything, uh, and then many will see whether, whether any connections are on the blacklist, or we develop a, a, a tool called um, Know Your Customer. It's called Know Your Customer. And I'll show you a little bit about that uh, to, uh, you know, application. And um, that Know Your Customer basically had an ontology about financial services, it had access to and ability to get all kinds of uh, information about this blacklist and things like that. And then it had a uh, very similar to think about an RDF graph, a large RDF graph of all the data that has been, you know, uh, extracted from different sources and the knowledge base of uh, financial services thing. And uh, then it will do connect the dot. It will look for a path between the person or a company trying to open an account and anybody on the blacklist or anybody that, you know, any other, uh, uh, you know, a thing that um, uh, is, uh, is prohibited. If you're prohibited to deal with some entity, then if you're in this connection, 
then you can't open the account and you have to report to the government kind of thing. So, um, uh, uh, CEO sold it when we actually had not developed it and then we all rushed to develop it and deliver it. It was actually deployed and I don't know, I think this, that is still the situation because uh, that product is still active. That product still has something of the form of ontology. That product still has uh, something like a graph computation, path computations. Um, uh, and so, um, and company still sells the product. Um, it, at some point, I believe it was the, it deployed at more than half of the top 30 banks in the world, including Barclay and including Citibank and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, so coming to this then, one of the fundamental thing that um, I, one of the fundamental things that I was believer in, and I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still interested in finding, um, as I said, the word ontology was there. Right, but the whole the whole role of ontology um, in uh, the context of the information processing, meaning trying to understand a content, meaning a web page or entity on a web page, to its role in search or browsing or advertisement, all that was not, to my knowledge, figured out. There are bit, there were bits and pieces of the things there, and there were other people who had you know who had semantics on the horizon just. What come to my mind is that in 1994, 93, I started this, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a project called Info Harness, and another colleague, um, uh, Leon Sklar, was uh, then took a prominent role, and one of my former student um, was involved, um, uh, you know, Shitij uh, uh, Shah, and then uh, I don't know if Vipul was involved, but Shitij was involved, and then it became commercial product from Belcor. To my knowledge, that was the first pro. pro product to have meta beta metadata based faceted search of heterogeneous content okay very first product as far as i can tell and you, should, you can look up info harness i know but i did, i don't call it very semantic yet it had metadata and metadata allowed us to deal with variety or heterogeneity but it was not because it did not have anything similar to this knowledge base ontology knowledge graph knowledge base whatever you want to call it that was that means there is no common interpretation of the terms that are in the data, okay. So, um, uh, but but uh, but uh, uh, we, uh, as I said, 92, uh, we had a uh, paper that talked about ontology. 93, we had a technical report which talked about multiple ontologies, and uh, uh, you know, federated ontologies and web content. And uh, 90, that published got published in 94 in CIKM. At the same time, there were a couple of guys, the guys in ISI. Um, a, a no block and uh, somebody else. I'm missing the name. Uh, uh, and they had system. Uh, I think um, later on it was called Ariadne. The system was called. So they were also ones who had um, uh, started to talk about ontology. Right? I'm talking about '94. So again, ontology was there. Ontology was there, but in this, in those times, we had not yet figured out all the things about crawling a lot of web content. And uh, indexing it with regards to the con you know sub ontology. So the the pieces, right? One, uh, and then of course crawling. Um, what what happened? When did the crawling come about? In 1997, when when Google was founded, um, the biggest uh, internet company, if I remember correctly, was Yahoo. Right? And uh, what Yahoo? Yahoo, by the way, had also figured out some role of ontology. So to my knowledge. The first person with the job title ontologist was Srinija, uh, a, a person who basically managed Yahoo's directory structure. So the ontology for Yahoo was that it's directory structure. Right? And whether I should add this one more node in the directory structure or not is something that ultimately uh, uh, was decided by this ontologist Srinija and her team. Right? But uh, unfortunately, Yahoo uh, was following manual cataloging. So a new website comes. And um, uh, a human editor would say this website is uh, an example of a research group working on semantic web. Noesis web pa you know, page is an example of that. So if they have that node, um, they would uh, put uh, manually under that node in the uh, uh, Yahoo uh, taxonomy. Uh, it was taxonomy, not a full page ontology in representational sense. Uh, uh, this particular note there. So when you click on that note, it'll you know all the possible things will come up, and it'll, you know you'll have, you'll see this, and you'll see uh, Tim Finance Group uh, with uh, does a semantic web, and 
uh, there was University of Maryland group uh, at that point of time where Jim Handler was. That will show. And I'm just giving you an example, right? These are not all uh, 97 uh, examples, but that is how it will look like. Um, or you can go to say research on workflow, and my group will show up because we did uh, work on research on workflow. Somebody found it and they manually can that. But at that point of time, uh, and I remember this because I, I had started a company. So at that point of time, Yahoo had 50,000 editors. No, sorry, 9,000 editors. 9,000, not 50,000. Editors cataloging. On average, I was told by somebody, it's an official uh, number, that a person would catalog 50. Uh, pages per day. But by that time, the growth of web, web was such. Remember, when I started in uh, working with web in 92 time frame, and we're talking about Mozilla, and before that, actually, um, yeah, we're talking about, um, I forget now, all this gopher and other things that were there. At that point of time, I would remember all the websites that I had remembered. I thought, well, you know, or you are the whole, you, you, you know, I know this professor working on this and this URL, and I would remember that. By the time this 97, the number of sites came with hundreds and thousands, and tens of thousands, and hundreds of thousands. Now the humans could not keep it up. So it was a great time for search engines to start. Right? Now, um, uh, you know, uh, I, 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 I don't want to take too much time, but basically, the first set of search engines excite. Uh, and uh, Altavista, they were IR, basic IR search engines, right? And so the you know, fundamental thing would be TFIDF, kind of stuff, right? So more time a particular word appears in the document, that document comes up high in the search result. So people started putting the, they wanted, they are selling car, uh, uh, they will put 500, uh, uh, you know, cars of car in the page, and that page would come up uh, higher. And that then came the brilliance of page rank. Right? What did page rank do? Explain. So page rank basically finds how important a page is on a web page based on how many links it has got, how many from how many pages it has been linked. So if a page is linked from hundred pages, it it is considered as more important. Right, but th that's that's what it does. But what is the brilliance there? Brilliance is what? Crowdsourcing. That, huh? Crowdsourcing. Exactly. <clears throat> right? You are depending on let uh, uh, everybody is making a decision of what is important. Right? In my HTTP, uh, uh, you know, in my uh, href, I have this term. For that term, I'm linking to this thing. For that term, this is an important site, and everybody makes a decision on there. You know, and then I am tapping into that decision. So that was the brilliance, right? So that basically, that in a very simplistic way, that combined with the single box aspect is what allowed Google to go past Alta Vista and Excite and all that. Alta, Excite later on failed uh, and was acquired or whatever for trivial amount or uh, bankrupt or something like that. Uh, um, then, um, so then we started, right? Then, then we come in. Now, in my case, here is what I had recognized, and this is a fundamental as today. Uh, talking to uh, a couple, you know, couple of uh, new students, and um, uh, you know, even my other students, I have said, there's something, and maybe the ideas are more recent, uh, you know, but I think they were, uh, they were there in a little different form before. And the idea basically is the following: that I believe fundamentally that knowing the facts as they appear would improve your information processing. Knowing how people commonly talk about something would improve information processing. What that means is that basically means ontology. There are two parts uh, in a simply you know uh, to an ontology. What you might call an ontology. One is a schema level part. So this is a schema. So I actually I had uh, in the football then uh, this just shows a top level hierarchy. Right? This is not limited to this. Football you have professional football and uh, college football as an example. And then within that, you'll have uh, the leagues and everything. So all that was there. That's the ontology in this case for the, that particular type of sports. Right? And then you'd have uh, teams. So in this particular league, uh, football league, what are the teams? Right? Now, here is another interesting thing. So one is schema. And the other thing is 
factual knowledge or you might call description and description base or instance. There are many different terms you can use to talk about it. But these are, these are triples, basically. So uh, we, here is, I think, what I considered. Here's a brilliant thing that we did. We knew we didn't want to, you know, we didn't want to keep humans adding that knowledge. And I'm talking about 1999 and 2000, okay? We wanted to have some way for uh, us to get knowledge from other places, not, you know, today, many of you guys work with Wikipedia. You're getting knowledge from Wikipedia. Okay? We didn't have that at that point of time. We didn't have Wikipedia. So what we did, we did was we had NFL.com, right? So what we did was to write a focus crawler. And the focus crawler would understand. Uh, so we, uh, I, and I will show you uh, the picture of how it works. Let's see if I can quickly get to that. Um, okay. So this one has a diagram. Uh, I think what is the what is the page number, guys? Where I talk about ontology design. Okay, right. So by the way, this is showing you. Uh, if you go through this here. On, ontology semantics has defined, uh, des uh, designed, right? So I was just telling them that this is not one class, a type that fits all. So we had designed ontology for um, the financial, the AM, uh, entire money laundering and um, know your customer applications, uh, which was uh, very um, simple at schematic level, but had a lot of, no, sorry, no, it was not entire money laundering, sorry. It was a record company, a big record label. Right? Music label. And uh, there, the ontology was very simple. Two classes in relationship. But the facts were very large number. A lot of different, uh, you know, uh, because albums. And they, you know, this musician has this album. That is well known. I, that's a fact. I want to know that. I want to apply that. Now, you may remember that whole thing. Some of you, my PhD students may remember. That whole thing came actually back. When I suggested Mina to use uh, 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 music brains, the, you know, uh, 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 Mina was doing internship with IBM or working with the IBM uh, person, Christine Hobbs, uh, I think is the other person. And so that led to the ultimately uh, the development of um, uh, the uh, IBM's uh, software, uh, sound, uh, BBC Sound Index. Right? But the idea there was that we are trying to understand content on MySpace. He said, let us use music brains as a quote-unquote ontology or knowledge base to improve the understanding of the text you find in MySpace, right? But that idea was here. So he said here, see, it can be few class to many tens of classes in relationship. Today, it will be even more and more than that, right? Because obviously the scale is larger. There is one difference, uh, I will say, in the front compared to, let's say, um, the scope of what Google is trying to build now. Our scope was more limited at that point of time, and again, we are talking about, you know, 13, 14 years ago. And, um, and um, uh, um, we wanted to basically start covering, we wanted to cover anything where there is a fresh content. That was the focus. Not everything in the world, but everything that is dynamic in terms of content, right? So, so you saw my, you know, ontology, kind of snapshot of ontology. They were, 15 different, uh, uh, you know, um, domains we had covered, where sport is one of the domains. Fifth, no, 25. We had covered 25 of those at, by, by that time, by, you know, uh, at some point of time. Now, uh, so you have, um, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, and, and, and what we did was, so we would be able to, once I say that in the football schema, part of the, uh, you know, uh, ontology, I have this, concepts, classes, and relationship, then I would write focus extractor. Uh, actually, we had tool to write that. So it would automatically create that. The code was for the agent, software agent, that did the focus crawling was automatically created from a GUI, which was pretty substantial. I wish we had commercialized an open source then. That, that would have, uh, then we would have, you know, that, that would have been very widely used. There have been some uh, tools to uh, help you write crawlers. But most of them have not had they, they still deal with syntactic metadata, not semantic. So there, there is uh, things to be done. 
and and so you can see uh, uh, millions of entities and relationships that we had those, those days, right? And um, uh, uh, we could develop that in a matter of few weeks from the very scratch. So uh, uh, you know, it shows you here, you know, schema and all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, and all, all kinds of challenge, technical challenges are discussed here, right? Of how do you do that? But the point was, you design the model, ontology model or schema. You write the extractors to populate different parts of them. So, football we would we would populate from nl uh, nfl.com, and baseball will populate from in part from and uh, 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 national and basketball league uh, 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 NBA. uh, nba.com uh, sorry basket, basketball will be from nba.com right uh, and that is the professional part then of course college is separately so and that all that factual data would come in and would populate the classes that you have which will create so here this is uh, you know, ontology and it will be corresponding knowledge base. Right? Okay. Now, okay. So, um, you know, as, as I was kind of noting, the dates are worth noting here. Now, these were all, and this, I think, I, I, you know, after many years, actually, I myself saw this. So, um, I hope you have uh, read this text here, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, uh, and, you know, I, at that point, I felt that this is, you know, because, you know, I, I did know that Tim Berners-Lee had used the word semantic web. But I had not seen any implementation. That's why I, I, I claim that this is the first implementation of what TBL called uh, the semantic web. Um, and then um, I talk about this. So our automated intelligent agents visit the site. They know, know what to look for. Why? Because I know what to look for as defined in the ontology schema. And uh, they understand what they find, um, and they acquired much more meaningful information. Right? Because the information I will co cover is basically what I will use as a knowledge. Right? And in the form of structured relational metadata, that term is loosely used here, it is quoted, whatever. Uh, and I do more than page scraping. And uh, which takes all the, you know, page scrapers take all the pages words indiscriminately and index the, them as keywords. This is the technology of that time. Now the page scrapers become more, uh, and then, you know, there were not so many advertisements in those days. Now there's so much advertisement, so much other crap on the page. So the scraper has to work harder to see really what is the content, what is all the other uh, fluff. Uh, and so that became uh, part of uh, providing. Um, uh, the uh, uh, search, right? So, so with the trademark uh, semantic search and semantic asset management, Tali brings uh, search techniques in the real world. So, Tali semantic search combined uh, digital media search engine with uh, services that located uh, fresh, up to minute audio and video content. Here's an interesting thing we did in those days. Um, so, I mentioned that. Um, uh, so we had an infrastructure that would schedule running of the agents. And uh, uh, there is no uh, total automated technique, but some, through some experiences and uh, how much new content we get every time when we run the extractor, we'll decide whether we should run the information extractor uh, uh, more frequently or less frequently, or when we should run it. So I'm talking about here in the context of architecture. See, you, uh, the first thing is that you create this um, uh, knowledge base, right? I, and uh, this knowledge base doesn't change that often. It does change, but doesn't change that often. And I'll give a couple of interesting uh, points here. One is that 
Um, uh, take an example of uh, in the football league. So more or less the team composition is uh, talked about um, um, at the beginning of the season. It doesn't change every day. Occasionally some player is let go in the midway and some newer is hired in the midway, but there's not a lot more going on, right? And uh, once the things are not in season, the thing changes much. So you don't run exactly every day or every uh, week or every month. You run appropriately, right? Uh, so that is one thing to know. And we will run exactly at a different pace, uh, depending upon the subject matter involved and the site. How frequently the site we think changes. The other very interesting thing in even those days, uh, we did something which I think might not even be done today. Here is an interesting example. We had found, let's say, because we had a uh, news and politics domain, that Hillary, in, I'm talking about 1999, Hillary, Hillary Clinton is the first lady. Office of first lady, is, is, uh, White House has office of first lady. Okay? But uh, after the election, Mrs. Bush became first lady. Hillary Clinton was no longer first lady. Right? So our executor would uh, have found new content. Then when it goes to insert it, it says there is already something else and this don't match. So what you have to do is to uh, say that other thing has expired and here is my new knowledge. Right? So this is how we created the knowledge that, you know, and we knew that this is more recent and that. And so there were a lot of interesting things that, happen, that happened in keeping this up. It's not as simple as just getting some information and putting it there. Right? So I, I put some of the slides, discuss some of this in detail. Um, uh, perhaps you'll find more detail here. Then you could find last year about how Google Noise got to it. The second part is like here I'm writing, you know, running against, um, uh, let's say, uh, uh, CNN website. In those days, um, uh, uh, we found through uh, you know experience and uh, um, experimentation that CNN was updating website uh, three times a day. So our extractor would also uh, visit the CNN uh, three times a day. Roughly uh, uh, some time, half an hour, one hour after uh, our expected time that it is updated. Right? So when we, we have time that we kept, uh, when they, we think that they are updating, and we monitor that, and then we would, uh, you know, our agent would be uh, going revisiting CN website and say, what is new? Looking for new news story, and that is the data saying there's a new news story. Right? I remember that I was giving a demo to the venture capital. And I was I was able to demo him uh, that our search engine uh, was able to uh, you know you would, we were able to search for some news event uh, 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 on that day that occurred on that day and our search result uh, return that uh, if you did Google it would not return that in those days Google was it did not have Google has you know does so many improvements every every uh, you know uh, all the time right. So clearly, uh, they, uh, but in those days, they did not have as well a personalization, like a very clear, uh, you know, a lot of analysis of what this user has consumed. They did not have this uh, that much of recency. Then they came up with the button, uh, uh, most recent, you can select, uh, last week you can select. So that came out a bit later. But we were able to do that. So that was one reason why I was able to convince my VC that they should fund us, even though Google was already founded there. Um, and, and so you will, uh, you know, uh, uh, now there will be a lot of things that, is, that, <coughs> that, that when you hit this, uh, when you come, uh, get to this data, we will do what is called a semantic enhancement. First of all, uh, suppose you come across the word Turkey. Uh, today in uh, uh, Petris, for example, uh, we, uh, you know, um, we have implemented a um, uh, thing whereby you use uh, the uh, uh, media spotlight to say this, this turkey in the country or turkey in the bird uh, and, um, uh, and based on that you will do disambiguation. So we did that too here actually, right? And um, we also did enhancement. For example, uh, you find the name of a, uh, you know, a player, say Roger Clemens used to be a player in those days. <coughs> uh, and um, then uh, the pay, it only says Roger Clemens, but our knowledge base says Roger Clemens plays for this team. So we'll automatically, uh, you know, either enhance the metadata or we will make the association that we found that term Roger Clemens and connect it to that uh, node, uh, saying uh, this is that Roger Clemens. And by the way, in the ontology, it is connected to this team, uh, you know, team name. 
So even if this page does not mention uh, the team name, in your searches by the team name, because I know Roger Clemens belongs to that team, hence this page is relevant to that team, and that will show up. And we had, uh, uh, you know, a stratified search engine. So uh, we, the context would be important. So if I found, uh, if you look for team name, the pages that mention team will obviously come out first. But then pages that uh, mention Roger Clemens did not mention team, because it is inferred, then they will come up. And there were more, there's more complexity than that. And so we had this, uh, you know, search engine that will rank it based on semantics. Semantics because we are exploiting relationship. We are exploiting how these concepts are related in a knowledge base. That's how the semantics came, right? And then, um, you know, uh, so, so there are those things we are built in here also. And basically, ultimately, building search or browsing or all the things we are about using all the metadata we have about it. This is, this is basically. So we did not exactly use RDF. I had already known and used RDF before this, uh, you know, we started developing that. Uh, we had a paper in 1998 on uh, defining um, metadata uh, on um, the link HRF. Uh, I mean, do you remember I mentioned HRF and then this MRF is a concept we defined, metadata reference. Okay. So we use RDF to describe the uh, you know link, um, you know, and the metadata on the link, right? Uh, and the original concept was published in 96, and then 1998 was. Uh, RDF, uh, uh, that same concept, uh, MRF expressed in RDF uh, that, that, that came in uh, the ACM Digital Library Conference. Okay, now um, let's see if uh, there is anything very interesting to talk about. So that is the pattern thing. Uh, I just want to make sure, mention something, a couple of interesting things. So. We did have this, uh, let's see, um, <clears throat> I knew the single box is important, but I was not that uh, smart as Google was. So there's a single box thing here, right? Uh, other thing. The other thing we did was we also we had developed an application for a mobile uh, uh, thing. Uh, in this case, PDA was really more than you know. Uh, uh, but but you can see that that I be sure basically if you read this. In, in, by the way, we call this uh, what do you call it? radio world? Yeah. Um, so oh rocket tube. Yeah. So 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 um, uh, oh, we realize. Uh, that um, there is very little real estate on this thing, right? When you are trying to develop something for a, a small screen. And hence, there is all the more value and importance of metadata. So what you would show here would be not the full content. Because typically, remember earlier, you know, Google and uh, search engine, this uh, uh, blue, uh, you know, search result with the blue thing, right? And you click on that and get, uh, and first two, three, uh, first two lines or fragment of line uh, that means in a few words will be shown, right? And instead of that, we showed metadata that had already been processed. So think about it. Metadata is a form of summary. And, and you are working a different form of summary right now, but that you know is uh, because, uh, you know because I'll I'll say uh, the, uh, uh, Roger Clemens this game. It may not be in the first two lines or first ten uh, words I could show, but that's what I will show. And the menu was, you know, the search uh, interface was dynamically created from schema that is relevant to what user was looking for. Right? So search, search boxes that you saw, uh, you know, uh, in, in these um, uh, things. So um, there is a. Uh, Okay, so this, by the way, um, to my knowledge, the very first um, any international event that was, remember again, 1999 was first introduction of the term itself. The very first international event, <coughs> conference, workshop, whatever you call it, was to my knowledge on semantic was this one, workshop on semantic web, models, architecture, and management. And my talk was, the, the good thing was, and so I was, uh, I was invited to give the keynote. And I talked about um, 
semantic web and information brokering. Uh, here is a really interesting info, you know, interesting um, uh, thing. I had, I, I believe that I had similar ideas, but the and I tell my PhD students uh, importance of the words you use. But the brilliance of uh, Tim Berners Lee's thing was to use the word semantic web. I knew metadata actually. I can tell you, uh, and I was not the only one. So I must say that there are other lot of other smart people right around there. So, but some of us knew importance of metadata and everything. And um, uh, there were there are, there are three. Uh, there is a there is a paper that we have. Um, I think it came in 2000, no nine, uh, 1999, uh, which talks about three generation of uh, information system architectures. Um, and there. Uh, I, uh, I have used the word information brokering. And that did have, if you look at my information brokering little papers, and we had a uh, paper, uh, we had 1996, we had a paper with, with the, in the title, Observer, a system for multi ontology query processing. Okay, 96, well before that. So we had ontology, we had metadata, and we had web data. All these were there before. But we did not have the word semantic web much more powerful word than I had used the word semantic information brokering. That's the word we had already used. And we had used that when my, with my uh, work, uh, work of my first PhD student, Vipul Kashyap. So in the papers that we published with uh, Vipul and I published, we had semantic information brokering. Oh, the other term that was used before that was a very, very nice term uh, by Gio Witherhold called a mediator. So there, the second architecture is called mediator architecture, and I wanted to introduce a third architecture called semantic information brokering. Okay, so you see semantic information brokering. But the term is geeky, and term is simply not something that uh, sticks. Okay. And so I, and I, I think I was smart enough to realize that the moment I saw what semantic web, uh, I said that is a term that is going to stay in 1999. So I immediately used that also. right? So that, that's at least as I remember the thing. So, but my, to my knowledge, this is the first, I don't know whether, uh, I think this is the first uh, keynote on semantic web. And uh, uh, certainly first keynote uh, that talks about anything uh, commercial related to semantic web. Because not only we had uh, a work on semantics uh, and information and the web, we had, um, and you can see, uh, you know, some attempt of defining now, uh, let's see. This is a quote, so this must be Tim Berners-Lee thing. So this is important. Semantic web, the web of data and connections. This is important, brilliant. With meaning, in the sense that a computer program can learn enough about what the data means to process it. And uh, later on, uh, Tim had uh, a brilliant uh, statement, a very simple statement to define semantic web. It is about tagging the data. That's what he says. Basically, labeling semantic. You know, it's about labeling the data. So this is this was another interesting thing. Imagine what computers can understand when there is a vast tangle of interconnected terms and data that can be automatically followed. But I don't see yet a notion of something akin to background knowledge or ontology. Here. If you if you, if you try to, you know, um, uh, it, it, can, it says that you know can a meaning, but meaning uh, described with regards to the reference. Of the ontology was something at least I didn't see. I may be wrong, but that's what, and that was very key to the Stali approach. So you will see here uh, my attempt uh, uh, here semantic web a concept of web accessible uh, content can be again as semantically rather than through syntactic and structural means. How do I see? I don't know what, what else is there. Then uh, uh, Daml uh, thing, uh, you know, the project that uh, G G G Jim Handler started. And he has a very nice talk recently. His perspective, just the same way I'm giving my perspective, he has given very nice uh, a perspective of his uh, view of evolution of semantic web. Uh, um, mind come, you know, is obviously more colored by this patent and the company and other things we did at then. Uh, his is uh, colored by the Daml, the oil, you know, uh, and then the, and that what became uh, owl and things of that nature. Okay. And then uh, you can see here, so, uh, uh, this is by the way, uh, Demos. This is like similar to Yahoo, uh, you know, directory. So directory structure I mentioned. 
So this is what the Thali was, Thali world model, which is basically the ontology. Metadata of domain media, business attributes types, ontologies, entities, relationship, automated uh, experts, reference data, all these were part of the, what Thali did. Uh, distributed intelligent agent infrastructure, we can you know, uh, launch the agent whenever we want, knowledge agent, content agent, and metadata metabase for the uh, content asset, although we focus on AV, there's no reason, you know, it's just a matter of scalability only. Uh, in the 2000, <coughs> we were able to process 1 million pages per hour per server of those time. Right? So not bad, pretty good actually. These are, I think, dual uh, core machine, well, dual processing machines, they didn't have cores yet there. <coughs> so dual processing machines, and they could process so much of the thing. And that is described in another paper in 2002. So you can see here, uh, you know, um, this is ontology and agents and metabase and, uh, and then you can see this whole pipe uh, variety of uh, applications basically that you build. Here's an interesting example. I, uh, this is very unique. So when you search for um, this example, I believe, uh, and you know, I think it doesn't, some, something is wrong when the, you know, uh, different versions of PowerPoint uh, change something that stood up here. But uh, it so happened that um, the user probably searched for uh, Ravens and um, uh, your text had these guys. Oh no, it has both of them here. Something else is there. So, so uh, oh, uh, ah, this was able uh, to show that um, you are asking for video and touchdown. Then you don't want video, of, you know, snippet. You don't want video of everything else. So how did we do? How did we know, uh, uh, you know, uh, and uh, you know, particular got you that uh, video on touchdown, uh, as opposed to everything else? Because the concept of what is in the game is in the ontology, and the event uh, touchdown event as part of the game, uh, football game, is there, and that those kind of things were pushed out, pulled out. Yeah, it's very interesting that. Um, uh, this page is automatically or dynamically created. Okay? And uh, what happens is that you can see these are the metadata that were extracted. Even today, most of the companies don't do, but I expect that some companies will go along this line in future. So these are part of the text, little part of snippet like any search engine has it. But in addition to that, we showed metadata. And in addition to that, we gave you direct link to the video, the asset, and Further, we use the connection that um, for concept here is Clemens. I can take you directly to uh, majorleaguebaseball.com and the page on Clemens stats. You don't have to do anything, it's directly given to you. I can take you directly to Yankee stats, the team. I can take you to Yankee schedule and I can uh, help you buy Yankee tickets. So this is highly contextual. These are relationships in your knowledge base, right? Or knowledge graph, or whatever you want to call it, ontology. And that it says that I can monetize. Rather than just showing advertisement, what we are promising to do is to, I can monetize this by giving you, taking you to very targeted things. That person who is interested, who is searching for Roger Clemens thing, might be interested in any one of this. And we could do it because we have metadata and we have knowledge base or, you know, uh, uh, ontology. And here is the interesting innovation. Uh, and I want you to compare this with Google's custom box. Right? This is, we call it rich media reference. And it's the same, you know, like the previous slide. So again, a picture comes from the knowledge base. Text, metadata, whatever things, including information extracted from a website as to how much this something cost. And then if you want to buy, buy from that website here. You see Google shows all the product uh, mm -hmm. buying choices. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> but this is a picture, this was developed in 1999, 2000, I mean 2000, I gave that, you know, this is a picture has not changed. The talk was given in September 2000. This is where that 
um, you know, uh, uh, ordering comes. And here the interesting thing is I could help you, because we use metadata and knowledge base, I could, you can order the content through any other metadata. Saying, we want to, want to order by date, you want to order by uh, this, category, this particular metadata, or that metadata, or my metadata, you can do any one of those by just clicking on them and it will reorder the content. Right? So, uh, uh, it's not just one kind of search result for, you know, but, uh, you know, Google is some of the wonderful, uh, you know, uh, uh, innovations. For example, um, it took the route of really understanding the user, um, you know, behavior and the past, basically, clicks and past uh, queries. And they use that to, uh, you know, uh, uh, rank uh, and customize the results. You know, the same query term you do with signing and without signing in, or I do, they will give different results. So there, there they took more uh, emphasis on personalization of the past user behavior. We had uh, more on metadata and knowledge. So those are different philosophies, and uh, you know, clearly that's uh, worked very well. So when you click on that, the video can directly start playing. And um, uh, you know, so you don't have to uh, go and search and launch video on that page. You, I, the pay, video itself directly. Uh, uh, you know, this is this being embedded on a page, but this will take you directly to the page and start playing in a player. Here, you are understanding that you know uh, sports, golf. So in the golf, you have these are the different things, <coughs> top players, um, and uh, you know. Um, he says, uh, looking, but the other thing, so David Dual and, and there's another Dual, uh, Roger Dual or something like that. And in those days, most uh, um, system, they were string matching. So they had hard time understanding the context that Robert Dual will be only in the context of sports. And let me see if there's another Dual is there or not. Yeah, the Robert Dual is moving. So my system automatically understood. When I talk, this is the single search, like Google search box. If you type this, it will automatically give you the golf thing. So far as I can disambiguate, it. Because it is now, I, my knowledge base has David Dua. And he is of type uh, golf. So uh, these are all golf centric uh, meta, you know, uh, command. In, these are all movie centric. So this, uh, all these pages are totally customized to the type of content user is interested in. That is semantic. So you can see here Tiger Woods and all the stuff and uh, you know of course we also were heavily into the video and audio uh, and images. Uh, still, images are important now, right? Because if Google shows custom box, it will try to show image. Yeah, you can see the metadata of images also. It will tell you also the bandwidth, uh, the, the, um, the, the speed, and other things, uh, the quality of video, and many other things like that. That are there. Yeah. And uh, let's see. Looking for relationships. For Tiger Woods as players in golf, relationships. This is all exploding relationships, links, right? And what you will find? <coughs> see, see, this is this is what I tried to do. <laughs> I tried to sell semantic inference broken. I'm still not giving up yet. <laughs> but uh, the the term was used by you know in in 1993. It just did not have enough of. Uh, uh, even though uh, we, we 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 did uh, uh, acknowledge and um, uh, use web, it was simply not positioned in uh, uh, web. Uh, you know, fo with the direct focus on web. So there's all the information out there, and in those days there were a lot of non-web information also. Today you can't consume anything that's not on web anyway. So so that, that is that is where. Um, this is the work on multi ontology query processing and many other things. And very complex relationship things. I think that this work can be still researched further if you are interested. This is a this is totally aside from that. This is nothing to do with the today's topic, but uh, for, uh, for some research students, it will be very interesting. That sometimes today we do relationships, right? 
and look at this uh, fairly uh, 1992 slide. The recognition that some of the relationships are very complex. Volcano affects environment. That is a high level relation. But in detail, there are so many details. Faceted in the facets on the relationship itself. Okay, I'm not going to. This probably was interesting. It was very interesting. So by the way, it's some, some, you, know, you can see the what that things were acknowledged uh, stuff. Uh, Damal, uh, information brokering, uh, Bandersley, uh, uh, Ramesh Jain had written a wonderful thing about semantics. But this is a very interesting uh, quote. Humankind has worn the web of life, so it's different web. Uh, we are but one thread within it. Whatever we do to the web, we do ourselves. All things connect. Right now, we are doing this thing for online web. He's talking about offline web, right? Real, real world web. Well, with that, let me just stop here. We'll continue this a little bit more later on. So try and dig in more with whatever. Um,